Hey y'all, it's Nancy the Handy Scandy here for Imagine Crafts. Thanks for joining me today. We are going to do something a little bit different. We're going to do a faux wood burning technique. So you want to start with watercolor card and you really need some type of stamping platform, whether it be a misty or whatever, because you're going to be stamping this image multiple times and you really need to stamp exactly in the same spot. So again, start with that watercolor card because your paper does matter. So you first will want to ink up your image with a water reactive ink. I'm using Versamagic and on this first one I actually do a couple panels for you. On the first one I'm using two shades of ink or two colors. I have Jumbo Java Brown and Tea Leaves Green and I just stamp them randomly and then you saw that I sprayed both the paper and the stamped image with water. Just lightly misted and um, I have seen some people spray the paper while they ink up their stamp so that the water really has time to kind of soak into the paper and I don't think that would be bad. Either way you do it, you want to make sure that you dry your image before you go on to the next step. If you don't have enough of the wicking and bleeding of that first stamping with the water soluble ink, go ahead and spray it again with your with your mister and just allow that, that um, first stamping spread. I know it looks like a hot mess, but that's what you want. Trust the process, it'll be okay. And then for the second stamping, you're going to want to use some type of pigment ink that is non-water reactive. In this case, I'm using the VersaFine Claire. And um, again, you want to stamp it all slowly and allow that ink to soak into the paper and do whatever it's going to do. So I end up stamping mine like several times because watercolor card is textured, right? So sometimes the images don't, they just don't transfer very well on the first time. Or there might be tiny little spots that just don't get all the ink. So that is what I did. That was my first one. And again, I used two colors of the um, dye ink that uh, that is water soluble. And I sprayed the paper. I'm doing the same thing. This time I'm only using the brown, the Jumbo Java. Again, sprayed the paper, inked up the stamp, and then sprayed the stamp, and then stamped it down. And you want to allow that ink time on the paper. Let it soak into the paper. Let those inks start to wick into the paper because you want that blurred image. And I, on this one, at that point, I thought that I had over sprayed it. But really, once it's dried, like look from a distance, yes, it's blurred. And it's kind of fuzzy, but you can still tell what the imaging the image is. And then when you come in with the detailed stamp with the pigment ink, and again, this time I'm using VersaFine Claire and Nocturne, and you stamp it down however many times you need to get a crisp image, and it's, it's just amazing. It really has that look of pyrography that we're going for. If you are not familiar with, what, with wood burning, go ahead and look it up. I think you'll be amazed at the things people can do with with wood and a, a little burning tool. Um, it's amazing. But this is, for me, it's much safer. <laughs> and it's much easier. And it's much more versatile. Right? I, I'm not a woodworker anyway, so this one, this makes more sense to me. Now, on this particular image, I did not have any slimline dies that would fit. This is a large image. So I trimmed it down as close to that border as I could. And then you saw that I colored in my, my little berries. Just very simple coloring in of the berries. And all I wanted was that red. I want that pyrography look to stay just as it is. So I'm using um, a red background layer. And I also die cut that trim just to give it some interest and to cover my whole card. So this is a much larger card than what I would normally use. I think it's four and a half by eight and a half. So that four and a half is, is much, much wider than what we would normally use. So colored in my berries, use a little gel, gel pen, and now I am splattering some gold paint that was just in my stash. But I really wanted that shimmer and shine. I also, as you can see, am doing it on the red background. Sadly, you can't see enough of that background for this step to have mattered, so you could definitely skip it. But I put a little splatter on the inside as well. I thought that would be fun. But look at that shimmer and shine. I really wish more of that was showing. But it is what it is. 
and I didn't want to cut off any of my image so it's okay you can see I have some big big splatters and some small splatters and I just liked them all and then I wanted to go around the edge with delicata ink I wanted that gold to be somewhere else so I used the delicata and just went around my edges direct the paper with the ink pad and it just kind of creates a lovely little frame right by that border and then it creates another separation between the actual image and that background so on top of my stamped image I have you are loved that's my sentiment and I glued it down with on point glue and it's beautiful it's not one layer but it's really close to one layer for me yeah this is really close to one layer and then of course using some some glaze to cover up the berries and it's just a simple but lovely card and I love this look of the faux wood burning yeah if you've not tried this technique before let me encourage you to use it you need very few supplies you need your stamp you need your two kinds of ink you need your stamping platform and a water mister and a heat tool because you want to dry it but there I have several that I stamped out with with different shades of ink different colors of ink at different times and also that wood one is completely different but I just wanted to try it with a different stamp and this is what I got this is my finished image or my finished card I think it's really fun have y'all heard of this before let me know downstairs in the comments I'd love to have a conversation down there with you obviously I would also love if you give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it found it educational for any reason that you liked it go ahead and give it a thumbs up also if you're not already subscribed to the Imagine Crafts YouTube channel go ahead and hit that subscribe button as well and until next time y'all this has been Nancy the Handy Scandy for Imagine. Mwah. I'm out.